you can now bring in custom shapefiles to power your maps and other visualizations in both MWater and Solstice. This feature is available to all users uh, thanks to the funding provided by Scottish Government's Climate Justice Fund Water Futures Programme led by Strathclyde University. This means that you can bring any kind of shapefile and visualize it on your map and tables. So let's take a look at this example of Malawi flood risk where we see all the districts of Malawi classified by flood risk. I've gotten this data from the Humanitarian Data Exchange and brought it straight into MWater. I can then overlay other WASH information and make data-driven decisions uh, with respect to flood risk more easily. I could also bring in any other data. For example, here we see a Malawi geology shapefile covering the entirety of Malawi's geology. I can bring in a drought risk. This is again from the Humanitarian Data Exchange data repository. I've brought in some drought risk mapping for Niger. Or I can even bring in individual sites such as healthcare facilities, in this case for Mali. So how do we do this? It's a simple process just covering a few steps. So let's get to it. First of all, you need to have your shapefile or GeoJSON file. Um, you might get it from any source. The examples uh, I used here are largely from the Humanitarian Data Exchange at data.humdata.org, where there are over 17,000 different data sets, many of them geographical with shapefiles. Once you've got your uh, data set, so let's say, for example, this flood risk map, there's a few steps to bring them into MWater or Solstice. First, go to the tables page in MWater, portal.mwater.co slash hash slash tables, and either open your workspace or create a new one. If we create a new one, we just need to give it a name and set the permissions by organization. I'm going to just set my organization as the administrator. And I can have as many tables, which means custom data tables or shapefiles, in my workspace as I like. I will add one. I've downloaded my Malawi flood risk map. I'm going to import it here. So note that I can import spreadsheets, uh, shapefiles in zip archives, um, shape, uh, shapefiles must be in the CRS4386 latitude longitude mapping, or you can also import a GeoJSON, which must also be formatted as CRS4386. I'll give my table a name, so Malawi flood mapping, and I'll choose the file to upload. In this case, it is the flood risk shapefile as a zip file. And then I just click upload to load the shapefile into the system and I'll get a message telling me whether the import was successful. In this case it was. Great, now we have our shapefile in the tables. I can take a look at this and even edit it live. I see that the shapefile contains first of all the geometry, so the polygons of the districts, and then flood classifications and flood frequencies, and the names of administrative areas and also codes that have been given to that. That's just what is there in the source data. Great, I've got the data in. How do I actually bring it to a map? Well, let's try and recreate this dashboard I was showing at the start. So let's create a new dashboard. I'll show you how you can access the shapefile data that you've just added. Make a new dashboard. Give it a name to save it. and let's start building a map. So I can bring in a map widget and start editing it. And now I want to choose under advanced options markers and shapefiles. So whenever I want to bring through my shapefile data I can choose the shapefile layer here. Then I need to choose the data source which will be my shapefile data. But instead of selecting a site or survey in my data source explorer I choose tables. Tables are exactly what we just added, and I will find the data I just uploaded. 
which was Malawi flood mapping. And this points the map to the right data source. Now, we don't see the layer yet because we haven't selected the location. So the system doesn't know what uh, shapes to draw. So we choose the geometry, the polygons. And here we start seeing from Malawi all the data. Now we have a few options here. We can choose the line width of the borders and we can choose the color. But since we have information in the shapefile uh, telling us how risky uh, in terms of floods an area is, we can choose to color by data. So if I choose to color by data, I'm given the options, the attributes of the data to choose from. Now if I know that flood class means the classification, classification of flood risk, I can choose that and then choose whole numbers since I know that they're from 1 to 3. Um, the color scheme would be better if it went from blue to red, I think. So let's start with blue for little risk, orange for medium risk, and red for high risk. And that way we have imported our shapefile and we've mapped it and we're using the data in the shapefile to inform how the map is colored in. And we get some insight from that right away. Now in my example, I also had a table. So let's create that beside the map as uh, augmenting information. So I'm dragging a table widget onto my screen. I'm going to start configuring it and I can pick the same data source. I choose the columns I want to show. So district name and then beside it I want the flood classification. Then I add ordering just to keep it consistent by administrative name. That makes it nice and neat. And now we've recreated the map I showed you at the beginning. So that's all there is to importing shapefiles. You go to the tables page, you create a workspace or add a file to an existing one. And then if the import is complete, meaning if the shapefile is in the right format, you will have access to it as a custom data source. You can then start overlaying water points, communities, anything you like. Note that um, in our example for custom shapefiles, uh, sites do not know which area they belong to. So you can't color um, an area on the basis of date, data from sites that belong within it at the moment. For that, there is custom uh, region imports. Uh, if you are interested in these, please contact us via email and uh, let us know if we can make this functionality even better for your needs and hopefully this will help you get even more out of the analysis power within MWater and Solstice. Thank you.